Welcome back to Rome Boys. On this episode, we're getting getting to know the Rome Boys. I feel like I should be sitting in your seat. Okay, go ahead. Introduce yeah. you. <laughs> Welcome back to Rome Boys. I am Joe the Farmer. <laughs> it's my Jumping turn today. Jumping Jehoshaphat. To do my we have Joe the Farmer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's my turn to do my testimony, so yeah. here we go. Um, let's see. Where to start? Uh, let's well, see. It was, you were uh, born. 1978. No. <laughs> I guess a little background on my family. Uh, Mathesan actually means son of Matthias. Oh, oh cool. So I, we, my great uncle, who was a bishop of Amarillo, he was into genealogy real Pretty, pretty heavy, and uh, he figured out that Mathesan means son of Matthias, so we're either the descendants of Matthias, who took Judas' spot Woo. in Acts chapter 2, pretty sweet, or at least the fo- his followers, descendants of his yeah. followers, so that's kind of bad cool. either way. No, yeah. not bad either I don't way. know that seat at the table was kind of scary one, though, Joe, of the 12. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. It's one of the Drew Straws. <laughs> yeah. he, got the, he got the short of the long one. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so as I mentioned, my great uncle was a bishop in Amarillo. He had a brother who was a monsignor in uh, Amarillo as well. Uh, they had a sister who was a nun. She lived in Florida. Uh, she died when I was pretty young. Tuberculosis. Uh, well, it was cancer. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so who knows? It probably was. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the point is, is that uh, the Catholic faith is pretty rich in the Mathesian yeah, side of the family. In the blood. Yeah, kind of. And my brother was even a priest for a time. So, you know, it's mm-hmm. just, it was pretty there. Mm-hmm. It was always there. But for me, it was, I don't know, it wasn't there for me. It was more of my parents' faith. I went to church because they said so. I went mm-hmm. to CCD because they said so. You know, it was just a checklist. It was It was one of those things where it was... I was living their faith. I wasn't living my faith. Did you always go to St. Boniface here in Alton, uh, Texas? Most of my life, yeah. I don't remember going anywhere else until I got out of out of on my own. Yeah, yeah. And then I would go to church just to kind of make them happy so they'd stay off my back. Mm. You know, just <laughs> one of those things. But, I mean, we grew up in this small community, went to school, junior high here at Alton, and my first couple of years of school, we actually had a nun. Mm. who was a teacher, mm-hmm. like my first and second grade teacher, even my math teacher. And this is a public school. Yeah, it was a public mm-hmm. school. It's one of the last, I think, in Texas to yeah. actually have, uh, to be owned by the Catholic Church, to be a public school, and to have nuns teaching. Well, interesting history on that. You know, there was a Catholic school in Rowena, and then there was a Catholic school in Alphen, mm-hmm. and Rowena closed down, and Alphen didn't. And I always wondered why that was, and uh, the story behind that was is that when you know, there was that state funding. Yeah. You know, so when it had the chance to become a public school, often decided to become public, where Rowena decided to keep it private, keep mm. it a Catholic school. Mm-hmm. And, well, the funding ran out, so they had to close, and often just still going. Yes. But yeah. there's no nuns teaching there anymore. Yeah. No, yeah. no. I think we were one of the last few classes. I don't know which one of my brothers and sisters still had a nun whenever they were going to school there. But yeah. anyway, so I'm the oldest of five. <laughs> My dad was a cradle Catholic. My mom was a Southern Baptist girl. And, um, Woo! yeah. Mm-hmm. So she converted. I would have to ask her her story on whether, why, you know, whether just so we'd all go to the same church or, you know, was it something that she. After marriage. Yeah. She converted after marriage? Your mom? That's a good question. I don't know. Oh, answer. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Homework. Early on. Yes. Yeah. Huh? Sorry, mom. I don't know that. <laughs> Uh, so well, anyway. that's maybe a good thing because you've always known her to, to. Well, she was always. I would say that to her credit, she was the rock that said we are going to church every mm-hmm. Sunday. We're not going to miss it. But she was our when we were young. Mm-hmm. She was the one that was deep in the faith, and that this was what we're going to do. That's great. Mm-hmm. That Southern Baptist come out in her. We're doing <laughs> yeah. this. Yeah. And uh, Dad was not so much uh, until later on when I got into high school. He had his kind of uh, really? come to Jesus time that's his own story i'll tell that some other time mm. but then after that boy it was yeah heavy i mean mm. in the at that point i'm already in high school yeah and it's kind of like whatever dad you do you your know thing. you're yeah. doing your thing that's your I, yeah sure you know 
I think we should have your dad on. Just I think it really attributes to your story well. Yeah, uh, I think we would because I mean that. I mean, he's my hero. Yeah. Don't know if you knew that. Guess what? Anyway, mm. uh, he's awesome. But yeah, he's a great guy. And it's uh, true. And he's re- one of the reasons why I'm so, you know, got into my faith. I think so deep. Um, whenever I had my reversion, mm. we'll call it that. Did you? Did you? Uh, was everything always hunky dory in <laughs> in the home? No. Yeah. No, I remember hearing them argue a lot. Most of the time it was over money or yeah. uh you know just a but normal, you, you, just a you normal are, right it happens but you never heard it uh, parental arguments and stuff i'm sure my kids can say the same yeah. sure but as so. a kid it doesn't feel normal yeah. you know you feel it right yeah but i mean there was there was always this i guess it had to do with the faith of that you never knew you knew that there was nothing ever going right. to happen yeah, yeah. It, that was just that's always a good they were all yeah that was a good kind of uh Everything Security work blanket. out in the end. Yeah, you just knew that. They, I just I, there was no question to me that they were ever. That's like, called hope. Or anything sure, like that. Sure, yeah, that's yeah. called hope. Well, it was interesting too. Later on, when I got married, you know, my wife comes from a broken family, mm. and it's interesting that, and I'm this is my perspective. I'm not a psychologist or anything like that. But whenever it seems like people come from a broken family, that is an option. Yeah, right. It's an option. Yeah, like if there's if it's, the marriage starts getting a little rocky. Divorce is on the table. Yeah. It's an option. Yeah. Where whenever, so when me and my wife would have our arguments early on in our marriage, you, you could see it. She, she, that was an option for her. Wow. Where me, I was like, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. The vows We're gonna say, get through this. Yeah. It's not yeah. that big a deal. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to yeah. get past this. But coming from a broken family, that is mm. an option. Hmm. And uh, both my parents came from solid families. The, the, they weren't broken or anything like Where's that. Where's your mom so. from? Well, she grew up in Miles, but uh, she... Local girl? Yeah, local girl. She grew up in Miles, Texas, but she did spend some time in California. Uh, my grandpa moved around a lot mm. with some... Uh, see, California, I think even Las Vegas for a little while. Oh. Uh, just uh, with his job. Um, he was in the military. He was a Navy guy. Mm. And then uh, got into uh, working kind of on that kind of stuff. Yeah. Throughout the country and moving around a little bit. Not they're not navy. They're not military. She wasn't a military brat or anything like that. Mm. But they just moved around for a little. Mm. But they always, eventually always ended up back in Miles. Mm. And uh, so they're so, here. In, you, I'm sorry. You've got you've got brothers and sisters, right? I got so. five. Like I said, I was the oldest of five. <laughs> uh, oh, you're the oldest. That's yeah, right. I'm the oldest of five. Uh, there was my sister Jamie, Leslie, Brad, and Sam. And so everything was kind of typical that you would see from this area. You yeah. know, everybody went to church, I think, and this is my opinion again, don't get mad at me, hmm. but I think everybody goes to church because that's just it's the, the culture. tradition. Yeah, it's yeah. the tradition. It's the, it's the culture. It's You go to church because that's what mom and daddy did. You that's went Christian. To, they went to church because yes. their grandparents Things did. are changing now, but yeah. It, well, I, I think the problem with it is is that nobody asks why. Yes. Yeah. And uh, they, they think that if we question our faith, well, that shows weakness. No, that shows curiosity. Yeah. And why do we do things? I never questioned it either mm-hmm. until it was later on when somebody else's faith was dependent on mine. Tell me my more. kids. Yeah. You know, that's when it started to become important to me. And that's when I started asking why. What, what happened? What do you mean? Well, we're going to fast forward through a lot of that stuff, that time period of <laughs> mm. my dark ages. We're going to skip that part. <laughs> um do you, do you want him to? Yeah, yeah, the college, <laughs> and when I was just mostly interested in just... Just say it. I spent more time in the beer joint than I did at church. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's it's an yeah. Augustine thing. Well, I was thinking about that the other day. Why was that so much fun? Mm. Yeah. I don't know why. And it, I look back on it, it was. It was fun. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It was a lot of money. And welcome to Where Your Money Go, where we try to teach financial security to some of the world's most ignorant millionaires. <laughs> Good grief. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's the part that really hurts Kinda the most. Not, when I look back on it, it's like, golly, all the money I spent. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. not a care in the world. Yeah, really. No. There was no care in the world. I was number one. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. numero uno. Life revolved around me. Mm-hmm. The world revolved around me, and it was party time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that was a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> he said that multiple times. <laughs> uh, it, that hurts. It's okay. Yeah. It hurts. <laughs> that stings. To think how much money is just gone. Yeah. I basically just drank. Yeah. Yeah. Drank yeah. all that money away. But anyway, so fast forward. So I get married. Uh, found uh, met my wife at uh, a wedding in Alton, and I was serving beer. 
<laughs> Have y'all ever been to a Catholic wedding in West Texas? <laughs> it was the one girl that he wasn't related to at this wedding. Yeah, Pretty much. Go, yeah. Yeah, 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 it could be very true. Uh, but, I mean, a West Texas wedding in... Uh, <laughs> especially a Catholic wedding in West Texas, there is a job called the beer man. <laughs> and your job is to walk around with a milk jug that's been cleaned. <laughs> and you fill it up with beer, and you just go around and serve people. That was my job for many weddings. He had experience in <laughs> yeah, the matter. Very so. much so. Uh, yeah. Anyway. So I met my wife. Sounds like the wedding of we Canaan. <laughs> yeah, a little different. <laughs> yeah, turned water, water into hops. Anyway. <laughs> So fast forward, we get married, we uh, have a couple kids, and uh, so it's getting ready for, well, my wife was a teacher. She was a school teacher for a couple of years, and then when we had our first daughter, Harley, she's like, I can't leave her. I don't want to leave her, mm. so I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Yep. I said, okay, I'll figure out how to pay for it. Mm. Sure wish I had some of that beer money back. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then uh, two years later, we had our daughter, J.C., and so we're getting, now we're getting closer to time for school time. A couple of years go by. And uh, so my wife's like, I worked in public school. I don't want them to be, mm. I don't want them to go. Yeah. I said, okay. She's like, I want to homeschool. All right, you're the educator. You figure out how to do that. I'll figure out how to pay for it. So we went on from there. And we found this, uh, she's, she's very good at research. And she started researching homeschool programs and uh some of the local homeschool groups in the area, and she came across this one in Brownwood, which is about 60 miles away, but it was closer to her mom. Her mom lives in Brownwood. And uh, so we looked into it, and I was all, for some reason, I was all for it. You know, I went to public school my whole life, went to high school at Paint Rock, and just, it was just part of one how hour, I grew up. One hour drive, that's a commitment. Yeah, mm -hmm. two times a week. Yeah. But I was all on board. As soon as we met with the the uh, school founder yeah. and uh, kind of got our interview process out of the way, I was all for it. I was, I was the one that kind of encouraged her to do it. Mm -hmm. What was interesting about that time was when we were deciding on that school, you know, you have this kind of a uh, school statement or a mm -hmm. uh, profession of faith or whatever, and they ask you, you know, do you believe in God? Well, duh. You know, yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. You know, do you believe in Jesus? Do you follow Jesus? Yes, sure. Great. And then do you follow the Bible as the only authority on earth? You know, the God's revelation. Only the only God's only revelation. It's somewhere in did that. Did you kind of turn your things. head like a puppy here? I did. A weird sound? <laughs> I did. See, at this point I'm still not into my faith, but at that but it did make me Something kind of pause. Go, hmm, yeah. Something's not right here. Yeah. I know through my wife went through RCIA after we got married. Um to just mostly for our kids to go to the we could all go to the same church together, which is a good reason. It's not the right reason, but it's a good reason. So we learned a few things that I didn't know. I went to RCI with her. And, uh, but that, that question just was like, something don't seem right So you checked the box and it continued. I checked the box you. because I was like, ah, big deal. Yeah. No big deal. Mm -hmm. We don't agree with it, but sure. <laughs> I don't know why we don't agree with it, but sure. I'll just right. check it. Now, I wouldn't be able to sign it. Right. Huh. I, would, I would have a problem with that. We would either just not go to the school or we'd bring it up. Yeah. So anyway, uh, the reason I bring up this school is because a few years later, we have our third daughter, Gracie, and Lacey is going to stay home with Gracie, and I was in charge of bringing the kids to school that day. So I, and that particular day, there was a traveling museum. It was a field trip. It was a field trip where the kids are going to go to this other church campus and uh, tour this traveling museum. So I got voluntold mm -hmm. to be a chaperone for this little field trip. So we went, and it was neat, and I won't bore you with all the details there. But I don't want to bore you with those. Thanks. But uh, the very part that, stick, that stuck, that really was the turning point for me, was there was these, on one side of the room, they had all these uh, partition walls, these half walls up or whatever, and they had all these posters on it. And they were the biographies of the uh, Reformation's kind of key players, mm. right? You had King Henry VIII, there was John Calvin, and there was a few others I didn't... Martin Luther. He was the last one. Mm. And he was the one that guy I got stuck on. I just read the bio, and I just... I don't remember all the details of it, but I just remember it very plainly showing that, you know, just had him projected as this great hero mm -hmm. that saved Christianity yes. from the evil Catholic Church. And I just go, mm. something is not right yeah. about that. 
I just just didn't know what to do with that. So I just kind of put it out of my mind, dropped the kids off at school. But then that ride home from Brownwood to Rowena, that hour-long drive, mm. I was just couldn't get yeah. it out of my mind. Mm. I'm getting chills now. Mm. now I get me too. <laughs> I mean, it was driving me nuts. I was sitting there going, it was like a rock in my shoe. Houston, we have a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. I just couldn't stop thinking about it, and it was driving me crazy because it was really kind of God reaching out and <laughs> kind of using my pride against me because uh-huh. I just remember thinking, are they teaching my kids this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it's true, yeah. but are they teaching my kids this stuff? Mm-hmm. So I had to put my money where my mouth was, and I had to start researching. Yeah. And I jumped in way over my head reading stuff that I sh- was not prepared to read yeah. and but then progressing into things that I could understand <laughs> and, uh, and, and just kind of going from there and, and really getting into uh, apologetics. So until your faith was Challenge. dependent mm-hmm. uh, yeah, on someone else. Yeah, until my kids' faith was dependent on me yeah. was when it became really important. It was mm-hmm. God using my kids against me. <laughs> he opened that. Well, I, I, basically, I cracked the door open and he kicked, kicked it, in. it in. And that question of why. You know, like, yeah, you know, why do we do this? Yeah. Why do we do that? And I don't know the answer to that, right. but I, now I want to find out. So I started reading, which is something I never did. I mean, my <laughs> wife walked way. into the room and was like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. you're like, reading. Yeah. I'm reading. <laughs> she goes, yeah, but it's not Dr. Seuss. You serious? <laughs> so, Where's your colors at? <laughs> right. Yeah. Where's your, yeah. Keep it in the lines. <laughs> so, what was interesting about those is that the more I was learning, the more I was sharing with her, mm-hmm. and whether she wanted to hear it or not, yeah. I was like, "Did you know this?" And I would tell her something about it, and she just kind of give me a look. And we had some very now she's a convert. Interesting. Yes, she was like I said Southern Baptist too. And uh, like my mom, mm. and yeah, so she had every man lots tries of... to marry his mother. That's what <laughs> <laughs> I got you get it, it's an analogy. <laughs> you tell my wife that, okay? <laughs> uh, so, so I would tell her things, and then she would raise an objection. She goes, Well, didn't the Catholic Church kill a bunch of Protestants? I was like, I have no idea what you're talking yeah, about, yeah, but I'll get back to you. What are you talking about? The Crusades? She, she didn't know either. She was like, yeah, sure. So then I would dive into that, and then I would go into one subject, and then the next subject. And there was a lot of history. Was had a lot to do with that part. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until I discovered, like, that was just kind of the history. It was like the rubber meets the road. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my goodness. This is all. It never didn't end. It was like you finish the Bible, and it's, that's it. That's the end of right, the story. Right. The Gospels are over, and that's just it. It's just a nice little Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just. Tales of Narnia. It's all just, it's over. Mm-hmm. No, it continued on. Yeah. You can't argue with history. It's right. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> and it just went on and on and on. And then uh, I was, <laughs> like I said, I'm not a very studious person, and reading was very difficult for me. And uh, so then I discovered books on tape yes. <laughs> or audio. And then listening to talks, and at, at one point I was listening to a lot of political radio, which I don't recommend. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just made me angry. Don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Dad recommended, hey, we got this new radio station in town, you yes. know, the Guadalupe Radio, and they got this guy on there, that, this priest that has these really cool talks, Father John Ricardo. Yeah. Oh, man. You talk about kind of the spirituality of what comes out of his talks. There's some apologetics in there, but mostly it's just the relationship between you and God and, right. and so through the scriptures and all that stuff. Oh, it's amazing. Probably 10 years ago, would you say? Yeah, roughly. A decade? Yeah. yeah, roughly. And then after that, discovered John Martinoni and his yeah. apologetics stuff and listened to all of his talks. And it just went on and on and on. And, you know, like I said before, you know, Lacey and I were having these conversations and a lot of them turned into arguments mm-hmm. and oh, uh, yeah. got it pretty heated at times. But as I was starting to answer her questions that she didn't know she was questioning yeah you know the scale started to fall from her eyes as well they were we were just kind of both going through this journey at the same time that's awesome oh that was great it kind of reminds me of uh uh scott hahn and and kimberly you know not near as cool but (laughs) (laughs) hey that's yeah yeah. well i mean at one point before this all happened before the whole going to the traveling museum and having that just massive just yeah slap in Uh, the face Yeah, Yeah, aha moment, exactly. You know, there was a time where we had some trouble 
there was some family trouble between my parents and uh, my brother and uh, and some other details that were pretty rough. And uh, we just wanted to escape. So we yeah. left. I, I never say that I actually left the Catholic Church, but mm. she said, let's go to this Baptist church. Really? So we went to the Baptist church in Ballinger for like two years. Oh, wow. No kidding, Joe. Mm-hmm. a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we were very active. We were the best bat- Catholic Baptist you could ever <laughs> see. Wow. Oh, man. We we went every Sunday, which most of them didn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, we attended some of their Bible studies every Sunday. Most of them were, you know, kind of in and out. Yeah, yeah. You know, what you would do. We even led a few, like, Dave Ramsey programs sure. through that place. And But something was just, for me, I was active, but just didn't feel right. Yeah. Does that so make sense? Kind of like there was a hole. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and in that hole, in that gap that needs to be filled. Uh, and those couple missing. of years, mm. I, I'm sure yeah. you, you probably went to Mass at, at least once during those two years, would you say? Christmas yeah. and Easter. Yeah, Christmas and Easter. Uh, yeah. Okay. We made it there okay. a couple of times. Yeah. All right. But we avoided the often church. We just kind of just let's, yeah. let's let things cool down Isn't that there. interesting, yeah. you know? But then every once in a while, we, if I would take the kids up there to go play on the playground at the school or something, I would just look over there. I was like, that's home. Ah. Wow. That's home. Wow. And I'd bring them in there. I was like, this is where I grew up, mm-hmm. you know, showing the kids that. And, but like I said, we were attending this Baptist church, and you know they had a great. The, the preacher was very, you know, dynamic. You know, he was good talking and all that stuff. But uh, you know, in that tradition, they do the whole Lord's Supper. Mm-hmm. But they only do it like quarterly, right? Or maybe once a month or something like that. And I just remember when it came around the first time, and it was just a little cracker and a little bit of grape juice. You know, and you take the cracker and you take your little shot, and then you hand it on. I just remember going. What? That, it just didn't feel right. Right. It yeah. just felt very wrong. Yeah, mm-hmm. wrong. Well, again, right, somebody was missing. And then that's when it came about that. And the, the, the next time around it came, I just handed it yeah. on. And yeah, the person that handed it to me that I handed it on was my wife. So she was like, uh, noticed. It's yes. so like, what's the deal? We had that conversation on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> what's the deal? I said, I don't know. I just didn't mm-hmm. feel right. Just doesn't make any sense. And what I was coming to realize inadvertently, it didn't come until later after the reversion, that if it's just a piece of cracker, if it's just a piece of grape juice, what's the point? Why are we doing this? It either is him or it isn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I didn't realize that until later. And then after we brought it back, and Lacey's even mentioned two cents. She'd gone to uh, service with her mom once or twice, and she just goes, same. That ain't right. That ain't the same. It ain't, yeah. it ain't right. It's not the same. You know, it's, something's missing. Once she you know, noticed it, she just yeah. noticed it, that something, someone is missing. Yep. Once you know, once you've been there, mm-hmm. it's got to be the hardest uh, no. Mm-hmm. You know, because mm-hmm. we say yes to Jesus, right? Sure. Mm-hmm. It's got to be the hardest no. Mm-hmm. That's why I guess I have the hardest time right now with Catholics is 70%. Yeah. Or 60, 70% 70. don't believe in the real presence. Mm-hmm. It either is or it isn't. <laughs> Yeah. If it isn't, we all need to leave. Yeah. yeah. Or why Absolutely. are you here? Is the question. Yeah. Why are we ask. here? Why? Yeah. Why are we here if that's not really him? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're just doing it to check off a checklist that, like, are okay, God, born, God's taking attendance. You're born in this religion. Yeah. I mean, why? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense to me. That's that's really hard for me to swallow now. I mean, before. <laughs> Once you think about it, man, you just got me a little choked up. Actually, just hearing the story. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, <laughs> it's real. After after the reversion and having going through all these, uh, you know, listening to Ricardo and listening to Martinoni and uh, Scott Hahn. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. definitely had a lot of Scott Hahn, several books of his and audio. Saint movies Joseph and, Lighthouse and yeah. oh yeah, good went through a lot of those. Yeah. Saint Joseph Communication, right? Yeah, went through a lot of those and uh, just I got real zealous. <laughs> Yeah. Everybody needed to become Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I mean, a lot of people go through that. They yeah, really I got real fired up about it and tried. I was on a mission to convert everybody. Yes. Didn't convert anybody. He blew up the AOL <laughs> chat rooms. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Because that's the thing. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. so. So anyway, I, I think I ran a few people off. <laughs> like, dude, you're nuts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but made a few of them mad. But uh, I, they still talk to me. That's good. Somewhere, mm-hmm. somewhat. Didn't bl- but I backed off. I backed <laughs> off big time. But at that point, I was just on fire and needed to, everybody needed to become Catholic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, even my mom kind of, 
<laughs> at one point she goes, "Not you don't have to be Catholic to go to heaven. <laughs> Finally. I said, yeah, but. Yeah. My argument was always this. I said, but if we truly believe that we have Jesus present in the Eucharist, we have him physically, don't we want everybody else to have Amen, that too? Amen, yeah, brother. That's yes, it. Yes. That was my argument for that. <laughs> we don't hear that enough. It yeah. Is that the argument? Yeah. <laughs> It yes. sure is. And and the point of you gotta make a decision. Either it is or it isn't. Yeah. Right. It is and if is it isn't or it isn't. Then we're the greatest idolaters in history. Yes. And we need to run. Yeah. And mm-hmm. just get away from this religion as fast as possible. But mm-hmm. if it's him, if it yeah. really is him, then we need to be a lot more reverent than we are. Yeah. I mean And a lot if, more zealous too to yeah, get people to join. More fired yeah. up about it. I mean <laughs> mm-hmm. I hope it didn't run too many people off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that I would say that that was my whole comeback was the Eucharist. Yes. When I finally come to that point, it is or it isn't. Yes. If it is, then I need to do something about it. I need yeah. to change the way I've been living my life. I need to do things uh, that reflect that belief. Mm-hmm. I need to start living my life in a way that shows, yeah, that's him. That's really him and we need to do something about it. You got to do something about it. Yes. Come to that point. It requires action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That reversion or conversion, whatever you want to call it, you'll get to that certain point that you just go, all right, I believe now, now, now something has to change. Mm -hmm. And that's where it got to me. So I I think it's awesome that, um, it's, you know, Jesus, he did go, uh, preaching the good news. Mm -hmm. Uh, he didn't force it down anybody's throat. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was his commitment to to what God had uh, commissioned him to do, the Great mm-hmm. Commission, uh, and us living our own lives uh, in a way that represents uh, God's will mm-hmm. is what converts people. Mm-hmm. You know right. that zealousness can be yeah. who you are as a person every day, and not just saying to other people that they're wrong. Right. And that they're uh, just, you know, you look at, uh, I don't mean to get off on, on your, your testimony, you know, and go down a rabbit Burn hole. It. No. But, circumstances are you permitted to? Squirrel! But mm. it's, uh, yeah, for, you know, you look at social media and, and political statements, it's it's mm-hmm. about the other person being wrong all right. the time. Right. And that doesn't attract anybody. That's right. Jesus doesn't go saying that everybody's wrong. And if he is, he's saying that the people who are saying everybody else is wrong is wrong, right? Yeah, like right. the tax collector can go to heaven too. Mm-hmm. Um, well, he says who whoever is whoever is not against us is for us. Yeah, mm-hmm. did I say that backwards? Yeah, that's right. Whoever's for us is not against yeah. us. Whatever. Whoever's well. Yeah, if you're, another if, thing that kind of came about with all that was that you know in that reversion, there was like, yeah, Jesus left us a church. That church is still around. So if we now truly believe that the Catholic Church is the church Jesus founded and speaks for him. Who am I mm-hmm. to pick and choose which of the teachings I'm going to follow and which ones I'm going to ignore? Mm-hmm. That whole cafeteria Catholic thing. Right. You know, it's all or nothing. Yeah. It's, you're either all in, you either are a Catholic or you're not. I yeah. mean, you see a lot of these politicians in the world yeah, today that, right. that are pro abortion. Right. They call themselves Catholic. I'm sorry. You can no. stand in a garage all day long, doesn't make you a car. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, if you don't follow all the... T- and I'm going to be a little controversial here. No, if you don't follow the all the teachings of the church, you're not Catholic. Established yeah. by Jesus and passed on to us. Like, That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can call yourself Catholic all day long, but if you... You can disagree, but if you just disagree because, oh, that just... Uh, that doesn't that hurts my feelings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, tough. Inconvenience. You need you to or... look into it and see why the church teaches it for a certain reason. You know, say you don't like, well, why, why can't we have contra- contraception? Sure. We're married. Well, just yeah. because something feel, feels good doesn't mean, make it okay. Right. Well, I guess my point is that just because we don't understand yeah. a teaching doesn't mean that we just blindly exactly. obey it. Or it's wrong. Right, right. right? It why not look right. into it? <laughs> right, it it's could be right. right. Why not look wrong. into it and <laughs> see why don't does assume it? just because you don't agree look, with it. Look, if you mm-hmm. what I had to learn coming in as uh, my own magisterium as a Protestant, sure. uh, you know, I... I went to different churches. And so I had to believe what the guy was telling me up on the stage, you know, mm-hmm. um, on the entertainment stage, I felt like it, mm-hmm. you know, th- I'd go into big, huge churches. There wouldn't be a cross anywhere in the thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were all facing, a, you know, other people singing to us and that's, that's neat, but that's a concert to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not trying to be ugly, but it wasn't, 
it wasn't Christ centered to me. It was centered on what this person was teaching. Well, there's a difference between worship and fellowship. Yeah, there yeah. There, yeah. I would say the Protestants would have it, the They're market cornered on fellowship. On fellowship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's not worship, and you got to ask yourself, what is worship? Yeah. Why am I here? How does God? How does Jesus want yeah. to be worshipped? What did God ask he tells on, us on His Lord's day to be doing? <laughs> the night before He died, or worship? <laughs> right. Yeah. So it, there, and I realized this uh, with Melissa. You know, my wife too made a big point, and your wife made a big point in your conversion mm. and and your reversion, and because mm-hmm. we all are constantly yeah. having Going a conversion. Constant. Mm-hmm. It's every, you better be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just find it awesome that our testimonies are, uh, and I know, you know, your testimony is on a different episode, Tony, mm. uh, but it's our family and how we're raised. Mm-hmm. And for us, it's our vocation. So uh, whether it be going through the seminary or, mm-hmm. or becoming married, that mm-hmm. you're finding your faith where it hits you square in what matters, you know, mm-hmm. right in the head and right in the heart. Mm-hmm. And uh, that it's you're getting yourself out of the way and you're making a sacrifice if you believe what the church sure. teaches. Mm-hmm. You are making you're a calling sacrifice. You're yes. your life. Yeah, that's had, exactly right. We, uh, we had to make changes when we come to realize that the church is who she claims to be. Mm-hmm. Jesus' voice here on earth for us. We had, like I said, we had to... Who are we to question? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We need, I mean, not to say questioning is wrong, because right. faith grows by asking questions. Yeah. Why do we do such things? But to say, I reject this certain. Yes. Oh, yeah, I believe in, yeah, I'll go to confession once a year. Yeah, the Eucharist, I'll take some of that. You know, ah, uh, I must stay away from contraception. We're gonna right. Yeah, yeah. You can't do that. I mean, question it, sure. Question it, but then do the work and research it and find out why the church teaches it. And bring it, it to God in prayer. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. 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 Understanding can the, give you the answer and the peace and take away all the, the yeah. doubt or the, the peace, or the, right? The pride. <laughs> yeah. Oftentimes that we put in the way. Yeah. What is it that you're actually trying to accomplish if you do disagree with something? Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> well, the mind that you're using is what God gave you, mm-hmm. uh, and you, you can't take advantage of that. Again, we go back to original sin, mm-hmm. acting as if you know better yeah. than God, mm-hmm. right? That's, right? Well, I even say on your point there is that I think most people. We disagree with it because we don't know what it actually is. Like most right. Protest, the most former Catholics who have left the Sheen, church. Right? Yeah, mm-hmm. most Catholics who leave the church left on uh, the notion that this is what the church taught. They didn't leave because of what it taught, but because what they what thought, they thought it, taught. it taught. Yes, yeah. mm-hmm. yes, it's so true. Absolutely. And why? Why? We yeah. need to ask why. Why does it, and to be fully formed, and why does it actually teach? Does it that? serve so. you? And I think a lot of people may think that it serves others for them to think a certain way about a, a certain mm-hmm. concept. Um, you know, there's a whole bunch of people that contracept in the Catholic Church. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And just because percent. you want to believe that that's okay uh, doesn't relieve the sin on their soul. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you want that's to true. feel good about it. Uh, and maybe you yourself want to contracept. Uh, and that's maybe, mm-hmm. again, why are you thinking like that? Like you so? said, <laughs> you were your own magisterium when you yeah. came in. Yeah. Talk about a load of pressure off. Yes. Like, I don't have Amen. to make that decision. <sighs> Talk about a load off. It's a, it's a formula, and I can follow it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? For a, from a guy's Especially standpoint a where it's yeah. like, okay, nuts and bolts here. This goes there. This goes there. Yeah. From a, you know, this is how you do instructions. Uh, yeah. We don't read instructions. That's yeah. our problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have an instruction book. We yeah, have two. Yeah. We yeah. have a Bible. We have the catechism. We have an instruction book, but we don't read the instructions. So mm-hmm. in your story, though, I, it, it's awesome because uh, you, you feel a little bit of confidence when you go through these trying times because mm-hmm. you can say, I've been there. And all three of us, I think, have confidence to stand in front of people who we don't believe we're smarter than or right. know more than. But but we've learned through our experience, which is where wisdom comes from, mm-hmm. uh, so that we can be RCIA teachers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's brought us together, and that's how you know Rome Boys was formed. <laughs> and it's an outlet for that zealousness of wanting everybody to be Catholic. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> to teach it at RCA, yeah. and we get to do Rome Boys, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, there you go. So that I'm not down everybody's, all of my Protestant friends' throats. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you need to be Catholic. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a great story, Joe. <laughs> I think it's one that a lot of people can uh, can uh, can relate to. And and you're being real with us is the your your yeah. baby. <laughs> yeah. Keep being real, yeah, because people can appreciate that. Because I think so many people in the church are all wishy washy about it, or they don't become mm-hmm. real, and yeah. people don't. You know, I remember a guy who was trying to. I became 
during this time also got really big in the axe retreat, mm-hmm. the men's axe retreat, and helped out on great them. ministry. We recommend. Oh yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I remember picking on a person. And it's like, hey man, you need to go on this. It's goes, not throwing axes, right? Yeah. <laughs> but he he felt his his excuse was, ah, I'm just not good enough to go. Uh-huh. Like, that's not that's the whole yeah. point in going. Yeah, yeah. You, you know? know what's crazy? You just said that. Uh, I told my wife, I'm not good enough for you to marry you. Mm-hmm. But that's the whole thing. Like mm-hmm. we're, none of us are good enough to right. join we're, in that communion of, with sure. Christ, which yeah. marriage is. To a, be we're alive, not good enough to, to do this, Eucharist. but we're doing it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, Dad even had this one guy who said he tried it, this old older guy from around the area trying to get him to go on the action retreat, and he goes, "Do I need it to get to heaven?" Uh, <laughs> Dad was like, "Well, no. Well, then I ain't gonna go." But uh, I was like, "Dad, you should have said, yeah, but you don't need a parachute to jump out of a plane either, but it helps." Yeah, right. <laughs> right, 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 right. That's, you're so good with the analogies. <laughs> That's good. It's true. Well, well I'm taking good. up enough of y'all's time. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, sure. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Thanks for being real. We appreciate mm-hmm. it. Well, thank y'all for joining us. Yep. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Check us out on RomeBoys.org. And in the meantime, be bold. Be real. Be Catholic. God, God bless. bless.